All right, welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're gonna take a look at non-destructive cloning. Now, it doesn't actually exist. There's no setting called non-destructive cloning in Photoshop, but there is a way to do it. And this is gonna save you a lot of hassle in the long run. We're gonna be able to put any cloning or spot removal on its own independent layer. And by doing this, we can edit it at any time as long as we save this as a PSD or a TIFF layered file. All right, so let's go ahead and start. And there's actually a couple ways you could do this, but I'm gonna show you the most logical way. If we come down here to the plus icon, and basically this is adding a new layer. So we've added this new layer, and I'll come up here and I'll call this clone so we know that it's cloning. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go clone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually remove this bird back here in the background. So the best thing I think to do that is probably gonna be this patch tool. Now, just remember my toolbar is set up different, it's customized, so yours might be layered under one of these icons most likely, it's gonna be layered under the healing brush. But I'm gonna go ahead and take the patch tool, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the bird back here, but there's one specific thing to do. And I'll just go ahead and do it right now. If I go ahead and select this, it's going to let me do it. But then if I try to clone it, notice it, it didn't do anything. Well, wh why didn't it do anything? Because I'm on a completely blank layer. What I want to do is select sample all layers. And it doesn't matter if it's for the patch tool, the healing brush, you need to make sure sample all layers is selected. That is the only way this will work. So under the stamp tool, notice we've got current layer, you wanna select all layers. But we're gonna go ahead and use the patch tool. So we're gonna go ahead and move this. Looks like I've got my structure and color it too. We'll go ahead and try that and see what it looks like. So we're gonna move this over to its new location and then go ahead and let go. And wow, it picked up the bird's head from right here. Now, that's pretty interesting because content aware reads the area around it sometimes and will accidentally pick up the wrong area. But there's a couple different ways to fix this. One, we can just redo this over again. So I could go ahead and move this to a new area and it picked up the bird again. I could just come up here and reselect this head and now just move this over a little bit. And there we go, we fixed that. Now, if you do run into an, an issue where it is picking up something, like this, that's not a big deal. So we will just kind of go back in time and I will hit Command D to deselect that. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually fill this layer instead. But we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go to select this, and then you're gonna go to edit, content aware fill. And now what we can do is tell it what we wanna fill it with. So right now you can see it's filling it, it's actually doing a good job. It's not picking up that bird's head. If we have an area that we don't want to be used, we can paint that out. So I can hit plus, I can paint this out, say, hey, don't pick up that bird's head. And then I can go ahead and hit apply. And bam, just like that, we're using the same thing, which is content aware fill. And in that case, it didn't pick up the bird. And now if we want this to come back on, all we need to do now is turn that off and just like that, the bird's gonna appear. Well, why? Because it's on its own independent layer. Now we could do this for any sort of tool that we wanna do. So let's say, let me zoom in here. We don't want this little branch right here and we don't wanna use the clone stamp tool. Let's say that we don't wanna use the patch tool and we wanna use the clone stamp tool. Not a big deal. So once again, we're gonna go over here, create a new layer. This is gonna be our clone. So we'll go ahead and put clone. And then we can simply just come here, target our new area, and then paint that out. And paint this out. And in this case, we're gonna clone it down. Just like that. And just like that, that's been removed. So we'll zoom out and then we can say, okay, yes, we've cloned that out and it's on its own independent layer. Now, where you're gonna use this a lot is in retouching of people's faces. So here we have some person with some acne. 
And a lot of times people have moles or acne or all kinds of different things, necklines, and you're not sure if they like it. So what you can do is save it on a layer and then you can say, hey, do you like it like this or do you like it like that? So we can come over here, click the plus, have our own cloning layer. In this case, I'll just go ahead and use the clone stamp tool since we got it up. You could use the healing brush. Remember, if you're using the healing brush, you want sample all layers. And then we could just come in here and kind of paint over that, paint over that, paint over that. We'll get rid of this one. A little splotchiness right there. We're just gonna go ahead and remove everything that we see really quickly. If we wanna get rid of these necklines, we could do that as well. And then when you get to your client, you can say, hey, I can clean your face up like this, or if you want it, I can leave it like this. So it's like this or like this. And because this is a layer, we can just go ahead and save this as a PSD file. And at any point you can edit this file. Well, that is how you clone non-destructively inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.